All right. Now, let me. Hey, freaking camera. All right. Here we go. This is a killer in camo, and I just did a video like literally like 10 minutes ago. Um, but I want to make my videos more focal. Focal. I'm going to focus on something. Uh, so today I'm going to be pretty much just talking about in this video. There we go. Love that sound. Mm. Sierra Mist Cranberry Mist Splash. <laughs> Sierra Mist Cranberry Splash. It's like falling in a cranberry river. Uh, anyway. Back to what I'll say, man. So I'm gonna talk about uh, the uh, the normal things uh, for concealed carry do's and don'ts, and then I'm gonna be talking about what you need to carry at all times when you're concealed carrying. Okay. So, and I'm gonna tell you everything that I carry, li literally everything that I carry on a daily basis. Okay. You can't forget your dip. So that's in my left butt cheek. Okay. This is in, this is my backup can. Almost empty. Slap ass full. So I've got a full can. And I really like how these are both the same thing. But look. Smokeless tobacco is addictive. Heck yeah. I love my dip. Warning the product can cause gum disease and tooth loss. You see any gun disease, tooth loss? Nope. They might be ugly looking, but they're still there and they still chomp. Uh, oh, and look at this, look at this crap, man. Look at this. So this is number 50,825G. Okay, and look at the date. October 18, 2015. Okay. Look at this one. October 18, 2015. That's when this one. I, I bought this one. At Wilco, I think it was. I, I bought this one at a gas station. I bought this one at uh, I bought this one at a Walmart neighborhood store that's local. So two different spots. And look, five zero eight two five G five zero nine three eight G. So I mean that's kind of cool. Uh, I have seen where people have actually bought what they call sister cans. Okay. And it's the same cans that come off the line. Like one might say 825. This was say 826. Mm, excuse me. Anyway. So, uh, there's my dip. Can't forget my dip. Of course, my wallet. I'm not going to show you my wallet. But I have my wallet. I have my everyday carry, which is right here. This is the Smith & Wesson 40 DE. I featured this in videos before. Um, full magazine. It's 14 in the thing. And it's empty because I was doing a video with it a second ago. Bust one in the chamber, 15. Nice little. Okay. So it's got a good snap to it. So that's my everyday carry. And I talked about this. This is the ETW. Uh, if you see the camera move a lot, it's because of the table. So I'm not like earthquake or nothing here. Um, and I'm not that fat where the whole, <laughs> the whole house, I have had people to ask me, I had a girl ask me one time, this is funny, I had a girl ask me one time, goes, uh, <laughs> she, she said something to the effect of, she asked me if, uh, how big I was when I was born, and I'm like, well, what do you mean, she goes, well, you're pretty big now, you know, I don't think you were much smaller when you were born, and my buddy looked at me and goes, are you asking him if he was, like the same size he is now that he, you know, when he was born, she was, well, I just want to know how tall he was when he was born. My buddy's like, he's 24, 25 inches long. I mean, he's a little long, but he wasn't the biggest baby in the world. Well, how many pounds did he weigh? I was like, I weighed seven, seven and a half pounds or something like that. She goes, oh, I thought you were like a 12 pounder or something. It's like, really? Like, come on, people. And I'm going to talk about this too. Just because I'm fat and white, like super white, and uh, and redheaded doesn't mean that I ain't got a soul, 
that I'm an asshole, that I'm a dick. That I have one, but that don't mean that don't make me one. Uh, so before I get on that tangent, let me get back. So I got my gun. The only thing that I would do different is have one that had two metal clips. Okay, so one clip on this side and then one right here. And what that does, that holds it in place and keeps it from moving back and forth. Uh, so that, for sure, uh, is is nice. Uh, I went with the 40 cal because the 40 cal, like I said, if you can't stop somebody in 15 rounds with a 40 caliber, uh, go home. You deserve to be robbed. Okay. Um, and I always tell this to people. Don't buy a gun. Don't, don't buy this thing. I bought this thing at Hickory Gun and Pawn. Don't buy it from your local pawn shop. Don't buy it from your local academy or your local um, sportsman's guide or your local Cabela's Bass Pro, wherever you buy guns at. Don't buy it at your local gun store. Take it home. Load up your magazines. Put on your holster and walk out the door. Okay. For one, these things need to be cleaned. That's number one. Go home, clean the hell out of this thing. Because they sit, um, they sit in pretty much, dang it, I can't get it. Anyway, they pretty much sit in grease and are packed up to where they can hold up let me just look at that. okay where they are pretty much packed up to where these things can sit for five years i know that's how they do their rifles these things can sit for years and never rust okay okay so you want to go and clean it you want to get you some heavy duty i always tell people the first ammo that you buy should be the heaviest you can buy if you're buying a 45, get you a 220 grain, 230 grain, something like that. Get you something good and heavy. Shoot, shoot the ever loving snot out of it. I'm talking, take you a day or two, get you some old phone books, an old steel target, whatever, and dedicate 100 rounds to it. Okay? Go out there and shoot a hundred rounds, and that's to where, if you, especially if they're the heaviest stuff you can find, you're shooting them, and then you're getting that recoil spring of working. The better that thing works, the better it'll be. Uh, what else here? That also gets the gun working, because you know they're only going to shoot this thing. I know Ruger for sure. I know Ruger because. When you buy a Ruger gun, they come with a little bullet, a spent casing. And what that tells you is that this gun has been fired at least once. Um, I think Ruger told, when I worked at a gun store, I think Ruger told us that they done, I think, three rounds. Okay? And three rounds is all you get fired out of that gun. Well, it ain't really much of, of a test. You know what I'm saying? Now, if it's a revolver, revolvers are dang near going to work every time. I mean, the reliability on a on a revolver is 99 out of out of you know nine out of ten times that thing's going to fire. Um, which an everyday carry, you need something that you can depend your life you know your life can depend on. I would definitely go with a revolver, but if you want max capacity, I'd go with a. a a 9 or a 40 or even a 45. There's a lot of 1911s. Para USA, they're from Florida. Uh, Para USA, man, they got a fat, what they call a fat boy, a 1445. It holds 14 rounds of 45 ammo. So the exact same size as my magazine, but it's in a uh, 1911. And these things are really nice, 1911. Like 1200 bucks are nice, they're worth it. Uh, anyway, so go home, fire it, 100 rounds. Full metal jacket, heaviest stuff you can find. Buy you another know, hundred or two rounds. You go ahead and buy you a big pack or whatever, uh, and then keep them. Buy you a good thing. I like Hornady Critical Defense. That's what I have in mind. Um, 
The Hornady Critical Defense, I've shot that out of my 380. I've shot it out of the 40, 45, uh, you know, nines, pretty much any, pretty much any pistol round. Uh, it it's a good it's a good round. It's definitely one that I would bet my life on. Uh, just because the critical defense has a polymer tip, so nothing is getting caught up in the actual cavity um, of the hollow point, and it, it'll work better. For maximum penetration, on, that's what you want. Now, uh, I always take my mud jug with me. I paid 40 bucks for two of these dang gum things. They're a bottle saver. Like, hey, if you want to be eco friendly, get your mud jet. Okay. Because I'm going to tell you what, I didn't take this with me. Uh, I was helping my buddy with a job. It's I, I, I work for a company, and pretty much what we go out and we go talk to clients and stuff. And I didn't take this with me one day because I was like, oh, I ain't going to want one. Man, I got, we left at like 10 o'clock in the morning, and we was out for hours on a Saturday. And my buddy put in a dip just right after we left, and I had to put one in. Of course, when your buddy puts a dip in, you got to put a dip in, too. Tell you what, man, looking for a bottle to spit in, then having to have a bottle, and then having to, all, no, 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 no. I mean, I had like four bottles filled with dip spit in a day because I didn't have a mud jug. Okay. Mud jug, man, you pop it off, you rinse it off, you pour it out, it's done, it's good to go. I, I actually take a magic eraser, one of those uh, Mr. Clean magic erasers, and clean out the inside because it's white and you can really tell what you've been dipping in there. Uh, like I said, every day. Another thing, too, is a knife. Um, this is the SOG Flash 2. Um, cannot ask for a better quality knife than SOGS. Most SOGS are made in America. I've got a Kershaw too that's made in America and the Kershaw is just as quick. Um, the Kershaw I like a little bit better because uh, it's not a plastic you know it's not a plastic uh, grip. It's a rubberized grip. Um, but it's quick. This thing is sharp. I mean, not a whole lot of force, and I cut that can pretty good. Uh, it's got a pretty nice belt clip. I have found out that when you carry this clip, you know, it sticks out a, a touch, which I can probably fix that, but it sticks out a little bit, and I've had it caught on some things. Um, it does got the safety, so, and it's just like a gun safety, too. It's just smart. Red, you dead. No red, not dead. So it's locked. You can't flip it. You can't open it. You can't nothing. You have to undo it. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, so that's my everyday. You want a good, sharp, quality knife. Something that if you need to pry something open with, you need to cut your seat belt. Um, I, I did have a knife that had a seat belt cutter on it and a window breaker. This can be used as a window breaker. Um, that can be used as a window breaker and this thing's sharp enough I should be able to grab a seat belt and slice cut myself free um, so you definitely want that uh, cell phone nothing nothing fancy it's just a Nexus uh, 4 LG Nexus 4 like I said nothing fancy about the thing for two freaking years now Biggest piece of crap that I've had. Uh, doesn't work. Screen goes out on me all the time. Of course, I, this is my second screen on it. I cracked it to crap. Funny thing about me cracking screens. The first time I cracked a screen, I was in Charleston, South Carolina, doing some business. And I was outside with my wife. And the freaking thing like flew out of my hand somehow. And it hit the only brick column that had brick border. It had like a pointy brick border going around the brick column. And I'll be daggone if the screen didn't tap it. Got a crack. 
uh, had a small little crack in it. I dropped it here in my kitchen. It hit the carpet. This is some thick carpet. It hit thick carpet, and it, when it hit the carpet, it cr just cracked. I mean, it looked like, no, that was my other phone. I'm sorry. I had a phone. Well, I had this one, a Windows phone. And I dropped it on the carpet, and the screen spiderwebbed. I mean, it's just... <sighs> <sighs> so then, I had to get this phone fixed. 100 bucks to get it fixed. The charging port went out on it, and I dropped it the other day. While I was at the doctor's office, I dropped it on their... Excuse me, on their carpeted floor from like two feet from me. It was actually above my knee that I dropped it. It was literally I had my hand above my knee and I was texting and it slipped out of my hand, fell, and now it's cracked and it keeps cracking. Um, so a phone is always good to have. Another thing, too, is if you're a concealed carrier like myself, you need to have um, a self defense lawyer. That, that's all he does is self defense shootings and, and things like that. Because you don't know, every time I take this gun with me anywhere, when I'm doing Confederate flag runs that I do, when I'm out in town, when I'm, you know, uh, anywhere, this right here is my gun of choice. Hold on one second. Uh, sorry about that. I uh, had a phone call to make anyway like I said anytime I take this anywhere that I go you know I know that I might have to use it and uh, you should always have a lawyer set aside for that uh, I know in North Carolina that which they've changed a lot of the laws North Carolina used to have really dumb asinine laws laws like you know you you couldn't take a gun to a bar. Okay, kind of makes sense. Uh, you can't take it anywhere that you have to pay to get in. Okay, that kind of makes sense. Then they changed the law back in 2012, 2013, whenever I got mine. And um, oh, you can carry into a bar now as long as you don't drink. You can carry into a theater. You can carry into a you know a theme park and anywhere that you pay to get in baseball game whatever as long as you're not drinking and as long as they don't have a sign that says no guns then you're good to go uh, so hey I'll do that um, if that means that I can uh, I can carry now I'm only doing a little two finger is it oh I did I got hmm Oh God! Oh God! I got all the dirt. <laughs> Look at it. Anyway, uh, well they changed that. You can carry in a bar. Uh, you know you can still legally open carry. Why? I had a guy tell me, and this the sad part is the guy had a concealed carry license. Since like ninety freaking five, when they first started doing this, they'll carry it in North Carolina. He told me, when you get your gun, when you get your permit, you can't open carry no more. You lose that right. No, that ain't true. That ain't true at all. Uh, you know, oh, you got to be twenty one to take concealed carry cl uh, class. That ain't true either. Uh. So, check your gun, local gun laws. Um, make sure that you have your stand your ground law and uh, the castle doctrine and things like that. Uh, remember, go out, get you a gun, get you whatever you gotta do to get that gun. Shoot, shoot, shoot. And as always, this is Killer Camo saying, "Be good, y'all. Be good. Do whatever you're gonna do, and just be happy about it. You know what I'm saying? And keep your country going, man." This let your country hang out, man. With a big rebel flag out in front of your yard, let your country hang out. Hey, hey, that's my that's my video for the day, man. I might have some more coming up. I don't know, but remember, pack, dip, and spit.
If you're going to do it, do it with Copenhagen, only the best. Buy you a mud jug from mudjug.com. And if you're going to do anything, protect America with American made gun. If you love America, you'll buy Smith & Wesson. Because guess what? They're made in America. You love America, you'll have a knife too. You gotta have pocket knife if you're a good old boy like me. Hey, this is your good old boy, Killer Camo, saying, Ouch, y'all.